this question is a data summary sum and we have a table where the grouped data is given. So let's read the question. The table below shows the distance to the nearest kilometer traveled to work by 50 employees in an office. So there are 50 employees in an office and we ask them how far do they travel, how far do they live. So and the data is written down. Notice that we don't really know uh, how who travels how much distance because we just know a distance of 0 to 2 kilometers is traveled by 16 people. A distance of 3 to 5 kilometers is traveled by 12 people but we don't know which person travels uh, how much distance. So that's why when we have group data we cannot really find the exact calculation. We call them estimates you know. So let's start with the first information. A histogram has been drawn to represent this data although we are not given any histogram. The bar representing uh, the distance of 3 to 5 has a width of this and that. So notice here we have information about a histogram bar. Now one information about the histogram bar is the unit that we can calculate and the other information is the actual unit in centimeter that we can get from the graph paper. So we don't have the histogram but we have the dimension. So what we have to do is let's draw for question number A. Let's draw what information is given. So this rectangle is from the histogram bar. So we know 3 to 5 is the class width. So the class width, since there is a gap in the data, remember whenever there is a gap in the data for finding the class width, it has to be 0.5 added and subtracted. So the upper class boundary is 5.5 and the lower class boundary is 3.5. So 5.5 minus 3.5 is 3. So the class width is 3 unit. And the height, which is basically the frequency density. So in order to find the height of this, we have to divide the frequency with the class width. So this would be 12 divided by 3 which is 4 unit. So we know the frequency density 4 unit and the class width 3 unit. But apart from that we have two information. We know the width is 1.5 centimeter. That means 3 unit is equivalent to 1.5 centimeter and 4 unit the frequency density is equivalent to 6 centimeter. So this information is given. Now what we have to do, we have to find the dimensions of 6 to 10, this one. So what we have to do over here, we have to write down our own information that we have about this. This one was given, this is what we have to find. So for 6 to 10, so for this one, 6 to 10, what we have is we have the class width 10.5 minus 5.5 and it turns out to be 5 units. So this is going to be 5 units, unit, and the height is going to be 10 because the frequency is 10. So this is going to be 10 divided by 5, which is 2 unit. So what is missing over here is the dimension of the width and the dimension of the height of this particular uh, histogram portion that we have over here. So let's start. So for this information, it's a good idea to draw both the information one that is given and the other that we have to find. So write for 6 to 10 we want to find the width. So we can write given width is 3 unit and our particular class has 5 unit. The dimension width of given is 1.5 centimeter and our particular uh, class we, we don't know what the width is so we write w. So if we simplify this we can write w equals to 1.5 into 5 cross multiply divided by 3 and this is going to be the centimeter. So that turns out to be 1.5 multiplied by 5 divided by 3 and it is 2.5. So the class width is 2.5 centimeter. And now we have to find the height. So the given information is 4 unit divided by, this is 2 unit, equals to the given height is 6 centimeter and this one we don't know. So we can write height equals to cross multiply 6 into 2 divided by 4 centimeter. So this is 2 to the 4 and 2 3 the 6. So it is 3 centimeter. Now let's restate the dimensions. 
So the dimensions would be answer. It is 2.5 centimeter wide and 3 centimeter high. Question number B, we have to use linear interpolation uh, formula to find the estimate of the mean. Remember, we don't have the exact data, we have grouped data and in grouped data, it is always estimate. So we cannot find the exact median. So these are the steps. The first thing that we have to do, question number B, we have to find the median position. So median position. So we have altogether 50 data. So it is going to be 50 by 2 at position. So that is 25th position. Remember, when we have even number of data, there is nothing in the middle. If you divide 50 by 2, it is 25 on one side and 25 on the other side. So we don't have anything in the middle. So we have to take two positions. So 25th and 26th position. Now we have to count for the median class. So if you count it, so count the frequency. So 16 plus 12 is 28. So that means the 25th and 26th position is going to be this class 3, 5. So 3 to 5 is the median class. Now comes the linear interpolation formula. So you have to pay attention. This is a bit tricky. So the median is going to be, first of all, we take the lower class boundary. Since there is gap in the data, we have to do continuity correction of 0.5. So 0.5 before 3 is 2.5, then we write plus, then we write the position which is 50 by 2, then we subtract and we write the cumulative frequency, meaning the total frequency before that which is 16. Remember, the total frequency up to the class, so which is 16, divided by the frequency of this class which is 12. And then we have to multiply this by the class width. We already know the class width is uh, 3 from the dimension sum. So what we have to do is now we have to calculate this. You have to be very careful as you calculate this since there are brackets and divisions and the calculator can easily misunderstand. So let's start with the innermost bracket. 50 by 2 is 25. So 25 minus 16 is 9. Now then we have to divide it with 12 and then we have to multiply this by 3. And then we have to add at the end 2.5. So it becomes 4.75. 4.75 and that is the median. So the next question is question number C. In question number C1, we have to find the estimate mean. Remember, so we have to find the estimate mean. So for the estimate mean, estimate mean now one thing is important usually what we do for estimate mean is we take the midpoint since the midpoints are given and we multiply each of them with the frequency and we add it up but if you pay attention the summation of that is given summation of data into frequency that means the midpoint into the frequency is given which is 394 so we can use this 394 divided by total number of data which is 50 so you have to pay attention and read the question carefully so this is going to be 394 divided by 50 which is 7.88 in C2 what we have is estimate the standard deviation so again for estimate variance we cannot find the standard deviation without calculating the variance first so we need uh, summation of data square into frequency which is given 6500 so 6500 divided by number of data is 50 minus mean squared which is estimate mean squared so let's calculate this one so this is going to be 6500 divided by 50 and then we subtract 7.88 square and that turns out to be 67.9056 67.9056 now we have to do square root therefore estimate standard deviation equals to so let's do the square root of this 
and we get 8.24. 8.24. In question number D, we have to describe the skewness and we have to give a reason. Uh, there are quite a number of ways of uh, knowing the skewness, but one way, and we're going to use that way, is to compare the median and the mean. So this is how you present it. You write the value of the median. So median equals to 4.75. Then you write down the value of the mean. Mean equals to 7.88. Then you compare them. You write since. So the mean is greater than the median. So the median is less than the mean. So since the median is less than the mean, it is a positive, positive skewness. So remember, when the median is more than when the mean is more than the median, then it's a positive skewness. The final question uh, really checks the basic concepts of statistics, whether you know the concept of mean, median, and standard deviation. So let's see what it is. So we have Peng starts to work in this office as the 51st employee. We knew that first of all they were around uh, 50 employees, and this is the 51st employee. And she travels a distance of 7.88 km to work. So she travels quite a number of distance to work. So that is 7.88 km, which is exactly the mean, if you remember, which we just did. So without carrying out any further calculation, state giving a reason what effect Peng's addition to the workforce would have on your estimate for the mean. Well, first of all, it would have no nothing. You know, it would not... Uh, affect the mean at all. So you will say mean would be unchanged since value is equal to 7.88 kilometer. That means she travels a distance that is equal to the mean. So mean would be unchanged. Mean, what mean does is it equally distributes something among everyone. That's what mean does. So suppose you have three or four friends, uh, friends having uh, dinner somewhere and different people order different things and you have a bill. What the mean does is sharing the bill among everyone. So that's what it does. So if the mean is 7.88, so it would not be changed if a new person uh, is also that particular value. So the next one is median. Now median is the middle data when the data is arranged from smallest to largest. So the median would be changed because what happens, previously there were 50 data. So the median position was different. Now there would be 51st. So the median position would be, so new Median position would be 51 by 2th position, so which is going to be 25.5th position, that is 26th position. Previously it was 25th and 26th position, you have to take 2, so the median would be changed. So median would be changed. To the next position. Now finally the standard deviation. So standard deviation what it does it tells us the gap between the data from the mean. Since the new data is exactly the mean so that the gap between the data and the mean is not going to be anything but remember the formula. The formula for standard deviation first notice the formula for variance. So it is summation of data square by number of data minus mu squared. Now everything is same here. Mean is same and this is same but what happens this particular value n would be 51. So as a result when you calculate it the variance it would be a slightly less than previous and when you do the square root for the standard deviation that would also be slightly reduced. So you can say standard deviation will be slightly reduced since there are now 51 data.